Hello everyone. Well today uh, Bo and I are up here um, at a friend's cabin and um, I'm up here closing it for the winter. Um, though it's <laughs> December 12th I think it is and we don't have any snow and it's uh, probably almost 50 degrees so it's quite warm for us for December but this is normally when I close down uh, his cabin. So he allows me to hunt here uh, during bow season sometimes during gun. So in return, um, you know, I help out around here when I can and where I can. And one of the things is, is that I close up the cabin every year. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting if, uh, if I show that. There are a couple of YouTube videos out there on um, winterizing a, a cottage. And um, some of them are very good. And I just thought I'd add my two cents into it as well. So let me show you today how um, I'm going to winterize uh, the cabin here. Uh, they do have uh, a couple of bathrooms, and it's what well, we call it a cabin. It's it's a house, uh, but um, process would be pretty much the same for any for you know uh, just a small cabin or a bigger home. So let me show you the process that I go through and how I winterize uh, the cabin here. So obviously, the first thing that uh, we need to do when we go um, and release the the pump, the well pump uh, coming into the house is we need to turn the um, power off. So here it's, it's running on 220. So we have the breakers off to the well. And whenever you turn the water off, you always turn the water off to the hot water heater. It's electric as well here. So uh, safety first, turn the power off to the well before you even uh, open up the well cap and take a look at that. So that's step number one. Okay, so here we are out at the, um, the wellhead itself. So it's about 20 yards or so from the house, in front of the house. And what we need to do here is we need to remove uh, the well cap so that we can expose the, uh, the pump and um, release the pressure uh, going into the house. So we've already turned the power off. So let me remove the cap and show you what's next. Okay, I've removed the well cap, and what we have here is uh, we have the power coming in, 220, in which we've already turned the power off, uh, coming out here. And then this wire is run down to uh, a submergible pump that's connected to uh, this conduit here. And halfway down is a boot that the water is pumped up and into the house from the... Uh, uh, from the bottom of the well and that's how the water uh, gets into the house what you see here if i can move around and get on this side is that i it's marked and this is where the pipe is going to the house and so when you um, when this is operational you want this to be closed such as this so we've marked where this lines up with the pipe that goes into the house so that uh, it's directly lined up and when the water comes up it goes into the hole or into the pipe into the house. Now what we want to do is we want to loosen this connection so that uh, we can uh, drain the water that goes from the pump back into the house. So we don't want any water in there over the winter time. So how we do that is, is we stick a rigid conduit down into this hole here and at the top of that uh, boot that that the water is pumped into to feed it to the house is a um, a bolt that actually creates a, a pressure to, to give it a good seal against the pipe going into the house and all we're going to do now is loosen that bolt so that that pressure is released and we can turn this connection so that it drains all the water uh, out of the pump one or excuse me out of the the casing here as well as the water going into the house so let me show you how that's done it's kind of hard to film <laughs> myself I should have uh, gotten some help filming this but what we have is we have a rigid piece of conduit that we've pressurized or, or pounded in the end of it to fit the bolt on the top of um, the boot now You'll, depending on what size boot you get and how big it is, you're going to have to 
kind of play around with um, adjusting that this hole here to fit on top of the the bolt to, uh, to tighten it or to loosen it but this is just a eight foot piece of rigid conduit and all we do is we take this conduit and we put it down into the hole and it's going to stop it's not going to fall through and then we just kind of fine tune it to there it goes now it's sitting on top of that bolt uh, on top of the boot and I'm going to try and find a picture and and include it in the uh, the description here so that you understand what I'm talking about what's going on inside this well casing And then all I'm going to do is take my wrench here and loosen this pipe so that I can go ahead and um, release the pressure from this well uh, and then the boot going into the house. So let me do that real quick and show you what's next. Not sure if you can hear it or not, but I just um, released the pressure on the boot down in there and there's water running in there. So all we do is now is we pull our conduit out that we were using. And then now all I need to do is this, this should raise up. Yep, pretty easy. And now all I need to do is give it a quarter turn. And now that releases all the, the water, the pressure uh, going into the house and the water is gonna drain back down into the well. So, so all the water going into the house, uh, the pressure is released, and I've got the valve open up down into the basement, which we'll go look at next near the bladder, and then all that water is draining out, and then the water's uh, drained back into the well, the pressure here. So this is all done. This is all you need to do at your cap, is to relieve the pressure here, and then uh, we'll put the, the cap back on, and then we'll go into the basement, and I'll show you what's next there. Step number three is uh, we're now down in the basement and as you can see we've got um, a pipe going out to the well as, as well as the electrical so this is where it comes into the house from where we just were the wellhead and what we have here is we have a pressure tank which puts pressure into the system so that when you go to turn the water on um, your your pipes are pressurized and you get a consistent flow as well as it's a, it's a storage tank uh, for some water so that the pumps not constantly kicking on and off for a small amount of water so what I've done is I've taken a hose to this tank and I've run it over to the, uh, the drain here in the basement and I've let all that water uh, drain into there I've opened up a valve on the uh, the highest point of the house so that it releases the pressure and the water drains out here. That red uh, handle you see there is uh, actually coming in so this is the the water going out to all the faucets and the, and the bathrooms and so forth. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and I'll close uh, that red valve so that I can put pressure into the system so that when I turn on a faucet somewhere else that it's all pressurized from an air compressor and the water will drain out um, uh, from that air pressure. But before I do that, I'm going to go, going to go ahead and hook up the hose to the discharge on the hot water tank, and I'll drain the hot water system is, at the same time. And let me go and show you what I'm using uh, for compressed air uh, that I'm going to put into the system. So here's an air compressor I'm using. Um, it's not very large. I don't have, uh, you know, I don't need a large tank to do this or anything. Um, as long as you take your time and let the air compressor uh, recharge itself and build back up after you've um, uh, put air in the lines and then drain, to drain a particular bathroom or kitchen, just let it fill back up. And what I wanted to show you here was is I don't have much pressure uh, in, within the tank itself. Um, I'll probably up this up just a little bit to about maybe 20 PSI 
but you don't need a whole lot of air pressure to uh, blow out the water in your line. So, you know, I just wanted to show you that. Um, you could do a little bit more, but this works for me um, because what I'm doing is I'm taking this hose and I'm running it to the highest point in the house. There is a second floor here and there's a bathroom up there, half bath. And so I hook up the air, the air hose uh, in that particular bathroom and I blow all the air down. So it, it does a great job in putting pressure in the house and putting pressure in the pipes. So again, just wanted to show you uh, not a large, uh, you don't need a large air compressor to do this. So let me show you where the other end of this air compressor goes and we'll pressurize the system. So here we are at the upstairs bathroom, so it's the highest point in the house, and all I'm going to do is take the inlet off of this toilet and hook up my air compressor to this particular um, water pipe, and then that'll blow air down into the system, and this is where I plan on pressurizing it, so all the air is going down. So what I have, um, actually, let me, let me go get you... Uh, the connection that I have, and I'll show you how that works. So what I have is I have my air hose coming in, and then I have a coupler um, that I connect this particular M connector into, and then a couple of pipe fittings. I've got a valve here to turn the pressure on and off, so once I hook it up, um, I can go ahead and shut the air off right at the outlet versus running down to the air compressor. And then this will also allow me to um, take it to a couple of different spots if need be, um, depending upon if I want to blow, you know, just out a sink or I want to blow the whole system out. But what I do is I take this particular connection and I'll take off the, the inlet into the toilet. I'll take this particular valve off right here and then I'll screw this connection onto it and that'll just allow me, as you can see down in there, it's just a ball valve, um, to push air uh, into the line. So that's how I get air into the system. As I take this uh, particular shutoff valve off, I put on my made up connection here and, and then I just pump air into the system. So let me get that hooked up and show you how it looks like once it's completed. Okay, I've got all the, uh, the faucets closed, and I've got the air compressor turned on, so everything is hooked up. So I have my, again, my air coming in, and then it's hooked up uh, into this shutoff valve to feed, wa or feed air into the water line. So I'm going to open up this valve. Hopefully you can hear the air compressor kick in, and it won't, you know, take, it'll take a little while uh, to fill up the system uh, with air, but... Um, that's the next step. Is to so here we are um, at the highest point in the house. I usually start here and then work my way down. Um, but the air compressor um, has now filled up uh, pressure within the, uh, the water lines. All I'm going to do is turn on the cold water first. Usually it takes a second or two to, to kind of push the water out. And now we'll do the hot water. We'll let the air compressor 
uh, repressurize the system, and then we'll open up them both at the same time. So that's how you um, go ahead and blow out the lines. Now you'll do this for every fixture that you have. You'll go ahead and make sure that you do the hot side and the cold side so that um, the pipes coming into here, um, they're drained completely individually and then I open them up together you know, so that it just blows them out uh, both at the same time. So that's the water line. So let me go around and do the rest of the faucets and then I'll show you what we do with the drains. Now another key thing that you need to remember is uh, to do the showers as well. I'll let the uh, pressure build back up and then I'll switch it over to hot. If you have a washer, you want to make sure that you uh, do that as well. And so here, um, I just put it on uh, hot and cold, and then I'll open up the start the cycle, and it should. So that's good too. Just so, just remember that if you have a washer, you, you need to include that in blowing out the pipes. Now, one of the last things you want to do is you want to remember to uh, do the toilets as well, uh, so that you can blow out that particular line uh, coming to the toilet. And the reasons you want to do this last is uh, obviously within the tank, you know, water brings up the ball or the valve to shut off. Um, the water going to the tank after it reaches a certain level. Well, once we drain all the water out of here and it's just air coming into the tank, um, it'll never shut off. So that's why one, that's one of the last things you want to do is to drain the water in the, in the toilet tanks. So uh, this is the last one and so we should be good with draining all the lines after this. No, I take that back. There's one more. We have to go and just open up the valve on the hot water heater, but as far as um, fixtures or units, uh, this would be it. So what I've done now is I've hooked up a hose to the outlet on the hot water heater, and I've taken the other end and put it into the, uh, the septic well here. And so what I'll do now is I'll drain the hot water heater, and that's the last thing. 
uh, that needs to be drained. So you start from the top and work your way down and then uh, you should be all set. You can do your hot and your cold at the same time. So this is the last, uh, uh, this is the last fixture that I have to drain. So let me drain that and then I'll show you how we go ahead and we um, put the antifreeze within the drains of the uh, fixtures. Now we're back uh, to where we started. I disconnected the hose, but before I did so, I went through and opened up all of the valves uh, fully open, hot and cold, and all the faucets. So um, I decompressed the system is what I did, so that when I go to take this off, you know, this is, I'm not gonna have a whole bunch of air shooting back at me and getting water all over the place. But um, that's how we drain the lines. And pretty simple, took less than, I don't know, 40 minutes to do it two or three times. And again, it's waiting for the pressure to build up and going through and making sure that it's all, uh, uh, all the water is coming out. So depending upon your system, it might take a little bit longer. So the next step that we have to do is since all the water is drained out of all of the lines, is we need to go ahead and put some antifreeze, some RV antifreeze down the drains. So I'll show you how to do that. Now to drain the toilets, um, what we need to do is get rid of all of the water that's in the, the bowl itself. And by just taking a, a cleaning brush and poking it down into the outlet, what you're doing is, is you're pushing the water through the trap built into the toilet. So you just want to go ahead and push through as, as much of the water as you can. And so there's not much left. Let's get that over here. And then I fill the tank with a half a gallon of uh, RV antifreeze. And so this stuff is good down to negative 50 degrees. So when I go to flush the toilet, I'm actually getting um, antifreeze into the actual uh, spigots of the uh, toilet itself. Uh, looks like I might need to put just a little bit more. Hold on. Okay, so I've got a little bit more antifreeze in the tank and, and flushed it again. And then all I'm going to do is once again is push uh, the water, now this time it's antifreeze, down into the trap built in within the toilet. But what that's done by putting it into the tank and flushing it is that where there was water within the system, it's now uh, antifreeze. So that's not going to freeze. So that's how you winterize a toilet. Drain all the water out of the tank, fill it halfway full of antifreeze, get all the water out of the bowl, flush it, and you're good to go. So now that we've got the, the toilets taken care of, we need to go to each one of the drains and each one of the sinks uh, and make sure that we pour some antifreeze down the drain. And what we're trying to do is make sure that we flush out the water that's in the trap and replace it with um, the antifreeze itself. And so maybe a half a gallon again uh, down each one of the drains that will fill up the trap. And remember that you need to do um, anywhere where there's a trap in the house, such as any kitchen sink, bathroom sink, laundry area, and then uh, that'll just make sure that no water's in the trap and that'll freeze. Now we're living in the lapse of luxury here at this uh, particular cabin. We have a dishwasher and you have to make sure that you uh, get that as well. So I've uh, poured in some, some antifreeze within the dishwasher itself. And then on the dishwasher setting, there, there's a drain. All I'm going to do is press that and it'll, you know what, I've already turned the power off to it. I'll turn the power back on. But I press that and then that'll drain uh, the dishwasher and it'll put antifreeze uh, through that uh, trap as well. So, so if you have a dishwasher, don't forget about that. 
now that I'm all done uh, blowing out all the water out of all the lines and uh, everything's done on the inside, what I'd like to do every time I do this job is I like to drain my tanks uh, on the air compressor because there is water that does feed back through uh, within the, the line itself and I don't want uh, water staying there and get uh, you know and rust out my tanks. I mean condensation already forms in an air compressor you need to drain it regularly. That's why it's always a good idea that if you are using a you know a, a compressor that you go ahead and drain the tank uh, as soon as you're done to get rid of any water. So that's what I do to uh, winterize the cabin. It takes about two hours to finish it from beginning to end, so it's not too long. And again, you know, most of the time is going back through and making sure that you know I've blown out the lines two or three times, uh, just to get rid of uh, all the water in the lines. And it doesn't take a whole lot of equipment. You know, a small air compressor, a hose, a couple of connections. You know, it's not it's not complicated at all, and a couple of gallons of antifreeze. So I hope that you've learned from uh, me showing you how to do this, that you can do this yourself and that you don't have to pay anyone. So I appreciate you watching. Please leave comments if there's anything that you can think of that you know would help me speed things up and or uh, do things a little bit better. But as always, I appreciate you watching. Take care. God bless. And we'll see you on the next project.